So I'm going to talk a little bit about sorting through the bowl or finding weed seeds in manure. As Christy had mentioned, we're starting to have issues with Palmer amaranth coming into the state. And one of the ways it's come into the state is through contaminated feed. So that kind of set off a project where if contaminated feed is coming in and then it's going through the animal and being spread on fields, is there a way that we could potentially test for weed seeds in manure to kind of get an idea like how much might be in a unit of manure or what kind of seeds might be present? So my lab essentially embarked on a fun journey of trying to figure out how to get these little tiny seeds out of manure. So as Christie's was talking about, weed seeds can survive livestock digestion. They can be dropped directly from the animal um, into the manure while eating. One of the things that we didn't talk about yet is also the fact that as you have these piles that are stored outside, you can also have wildlife or pests bringing in weed seeds as well. Uh, for instance, birds can eat weed seeds somewhere else and then come land on your pile and poop on it and there now for now you have weed seeds. So that's another option that can happen too. Interestingly, there was one study done in the 90s that surveyed a bunch of manure types. I believe it was about 20 different manures in New York State. And they actually found that 20% of the dairy manure samples did not have weed seeds that they could find, but the remaining 80% did. And the average was 75,000 seeds per ton of manure. Now, Christie's was talking about what if there were 70 seeds per ton of manure? Well, this is 75,000. Of course, this is a bunch of different weed seeds. It wasn't just uh, red, weed, red root pigweed or anything like that. It was a bunch of different types. And what was interesting is the authors did mention in the study that that actually is a very small number compared to the amount of seeds they found per acre in just the soil. So this was not actually adding a significant amount of weed seeds to the weed seed bank in the soil. So that's kind of something just to keep in mind as we're talking about uh, seeding seeds out of manure, sieving seeds out of manure. So I want to talk about some of the practical applications. If you are interested in trying to figure out if you have weed seeds in your manure, for instance, if you suspect you've received contaminated feed, that's kind of what I have pictured here. This is actually pictures of Palmer amaranth growing right out of hay. If you're getting manure from a new source and you're just interested in seeing what's in it, or just in general, if you want to know if you have weed seeds in manure, these are all methods that you can potentially do. And I know it sounds like a lot of fun to be digging through manure, but we did it and it wasn't too terrible. So as Stephanie mentioned, there's two primary methods. There are grow out studies, which is the method that she's been using. There's also seed separation and identification. And that's kind of the method that we went with, mostly because we wanted the identification piece to happen. We wanted to be able to certify whether there was Palmer amaranth in the manure. So grow out studies are pretty simple. You get a garden tray, you can fill it with a thin layer of moist potting soil. Potting soil is usually really good because it's pretty much guaranteed to not have weed seeds already in it. You could also use soil like Stephanie was doing, but you might have some weed seeds in it. So there is kind of that conflating factor. So you'll collect your manure sample and weigh it. You wanna know how many seeds you find or how many seedlings you find per unit of manure. So whether it's a pound of manure or something like that, you'll wanna know that. Then spread it evenly in your growing tray and moisten if needed. If Think about um, trying to sprout seeds from a garden, for instance, they need soil contact and they need moisture. So if it seems like you wanna, you need to moisten it to get them to germinate, go ahead and do so. And then keep in a warm, sunny place or under grow lights, kind of what you see pictured here. And thanks to Stephanie for the photo. Then identifying the weeds. Uh, basically you'll see probably something like you see in these photos here, a bunch of different weed seeds coming out. I do have a resource and we can share this after I'm done talking in the chat box. This um, takes you to, it's an organic website, but it has a really nice description of what like weed terminology. So are you looking at leaves? Are they serrated edges? It kind of talks about all the terminology and different leaf, leaf shapes, root types, et cetera. So it goes through all of that. And then at the bottom, it really gives you a nice list of different weeds that you might find in the different regions. So there's you know, weeds of the Northeast, weeds of the Midwest, weeds of the Southeast. 
that sort of thing. So depending on where you're from, you'd obviously want to look up whatever kind of manual you might find from your region. So there are some pros and cons with this method. Some of the positives are that you can identify many species present. Um, even if you get down to maybe, you know, it's a pigweed, you don't necessarily know if it's palmer amaranth or red root pigweed, but you'll know that it's, you know, amaranth. And it also shows you the number of seeds because you can count the plants that grow that are actually viable, not just present. So these uh, viability means the weed seed can actually grow. You can have weed seeds that go through digestion and they come out kind of dead out of the back end of the animal. So that wouldn't be viable then, but this method shows you which were and how many. One of the big cons though, is that this takes a long time, often more than a month. Um, sometimes you can get away. I know Stephanie was just sharing that she did it for 10 days and kind of didn't see any first flush, but some weed seeds take a long time. Chrissy showed a nice diagram where Palmer amaranth can take months to actually germinate. So that's one of the cons of this type of method. Um, not all the weed seeds sprout under these conditions. Some need to go through a winter or a cold spell. They need to fertilize before they'll germinate. So that's another thing that this method won't necessarily get all of the weed seeds to sprout. And you still may need some genetic testing to determine some of these weed species. For instance, Palmer amaranth looks very similar to red, red root pigweed. I can't say that word. Um, for some reason today. But the difference is like the length of their flowering part. So it's really hard to tell them apart. So you might still need some genetic um, testing done. So getting into the seed sorting methods, uh, we went with this route when we started discovering Palmer amaranth in the state because we wanted to get the seeds and be able to do those genetic tests on them. So in this case, we kind of had to start from the basics, like can we spike some seeds into different types of manure and recover them? So we did a bunch of different methods. We did dry sieving where we just dried the manure down after mixing the seeds in and then tried to kind of shove it through a sieve or like work it through a sieve. We did rinsing through a set of sieves and we used a dispersing agent. So this is like a cow gone or something that would disperse and the this is usually used for soil methods where you're trying to get weed seeds out of soil because the dispersion um, chemicals actually help the organic materials float and then they allow the minerals to separate from them and settle to the bottom. And we actually uh, did some of these techniques earlier on and then tried to publish that information and one of the reviewers said like everyone knows that the dispersal method is the way that you go with this. So we figured, all right, well, we'll try it and see how it goes. Turns out it did not work very well because everything in manure is organic. So it actually just caused everything to tighten up and clump even further. So you couldn't really get the seeds out of it. But what we did find is that rinsing through a set of sieves caught over 90% of the spiked seeds. So I'll kind of walk briefly through that method. So first up is get your materials together. You'll wanna to get some sieves. Um, these are typical soil sieves that we had in our lab because you know, I'm a soil scientist. You could potentially also see if any of your local extension um, offices might have a set of sieves. If not, I've actually found them on um, some of the e-commerce sites. I don't know if we're supposed to you know, say any brands or anything, but I've gone on and searched and you can usually find some of these online too. The best sieves that worked for us were a number 18 sieve, which was about one millimeter opening. So that's the really fine one. And then a 40, a number 40 sieve, which is a 0.42 millimeter opening. That one is small enough that it will catch Palmer amaranth seeds in it and not let them pass through. So that's why these particular sieves were caught or used for catching the seeds that we're looking for. So rinse sieving is pretty easy. You had enough uh, water to the manure to get kind of a slurry, make sure it's at least pourable. Then you pour it through the two stack sieves. And then we just took some flowing water from the spigot and pushed it through, and then kind of tried to use our hands to work the rest of the manure through the sieves. And then what you get at the bottom sieve, we scooped it out into these little pie pans. So a disposable pie pan of some sort. I think these were actually like little custard pans. Um, and then we dry them, that helps make the um, spreading out of the materials easier for the separation. 
And then you get to do the fun part, sorting the seed. So now imagine this is actually a light table. You wouldn't necessarily need to use this, but uh, spreading out the seeds and remaining materials on a sheet of paper or something will be useful. This is what it looks like from a pie. And then I wanted to zoom in to show you all these little tiny pieces. I don't know if you can see the Palmer amaranth seed, but it's right there in the middle. This is the tiny little seed that we're looking for. And again, just to show you, reiterate the size, this is a little scupula that we use in a lab, and this is the tiny little seed. So again, what we're looking for is really small. I think Christy showed the picture of these on a dime. Uh, if you think about the date on a dime, like the year, like one of these seeds is about the size of the number in the year. So very, very small. So identification, there is some visual identification methods you can use. In fact, if I can see if I can get this to open here. This is an example of a weed seed guide um, for North Dakota. So there are likely guides like this for all different parts of the United States. Some of these are really nice because they show you um, pictures of the flowering parts of the plant, what the plant looks like in the ground overall. And it does get into what the seeds look like. And if you look closely, you can see the seed sizes to get an idea. Uh, so that is one way. Again, you might not necessarily be able to tell all the different types of amaranth or pigweeds apart, but you can at least get an idea of, yeah, I probably have some sort of pigweed here. But again, just kind of goes through all the different seed types that you might find. So that gives you can give you an idea of what you might be looking at. So if you want to move on and go on to genetic testing, there are some commercial labs that are starting to do this. So since Palmer amaranth has become, has become problematic, uh, I have some links here that we can share later that show some of the labs that will do testing. For instance, there's a Palmer amaranth lab and the University of Minnesota is also developing a test as well. And that's who we worked with. We actually had Palmer amaranth. We had to get a special license to even have it in our lab. Um, and we had to promise to destroy all the seeds afterwards. But we used the Palmer amaranth, we spiked the manure, we recovered it, and then we actually did have it genetically tested just to see if like the manure had destroyed the DNA to the point where you couldn't identify it anymore. And that was not an issue. So they, the U University of Minnesota folks helped us do that. And then there is another lab and, you know, we don't necessarily promote any labs. I just kind of wanted to provide some links for labs that do this. There's another lab that is also looking at water hemp and Palmer amaranth. So you could send in some seeds and would actually test for both. So Pros and cons. Pros of this method is that it's really rapid compared to the grow out method. You could probably do this uh, one day, get the seeds sent to a lab, and I don't know what the turnaround time is, but um, the lab people for the University of Minnesota could do this in a day. So this could be, you know, from two days to a week, depending on the turnaround time of the lab. And it does allow for the like full identification of the seed if it is a genetic test that the lab can do. But as I mentioned, it has to be a test that the lab can do and genetic testing does not necessarily exist for some weed seeds. Uh, it also doesn't let you know if the seeds are viable. As we mentioned, we wanted to make sure that we could actually test the DNA after it went through or was you know, in manure for a while. We wouldn't necessarily know if these weed seeds would still grow. So that's one thing that it does not do. So thank you, that's where I will end. Here's my contact information. Follow me on Twitter or check out my lab website. And I think we have time for questions.